a dark and dangerous moment in America's modern history. Donald Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol, where lawmakers were getting ready to certify Joe Biden's election win. Instead, senators and representatives were locked down while a mob invaded. The chaos highlights the how much power the outgoing president has over his followers who are trying to overthrow democracy. Good evening and thank you for joining us. While all that was happening, President Trump stayed well hidden in the White House. Earlier at a rally today, he riled up his supporters, spewing more baseless allegations of election fraud and calling for the results to be overturned. So his defenders took matters into their own hands. Hold them this way. Hold them a crowd breached the barriers at what should have been one of the most secure places in D.C. It took more than an hour before Trump called for peace. By that point, a shot had been fired inside the Capitol building and a warning. The footage we're about to show you is disturbing. A woman was shot while apparently trying to climb through a broken window. Metropolitan Police tell Global News she was shot in the neck and has since died from her injuries. Tonight, U.S. lawmakers are getting back down to business in the Capitol and they're condemning the mob's actions. Unfortunately, we can now add January 6th, 2021 to that very short list of dates in American history that will live forever in infamy. This temple to democracy was desecrated. They tried to disrupt our democracy. They failed. They failed. They failed to attempt to obstruct the Congress. This failed insurrection only underscores how crucial the task before us is for our republic. Our Washington Bureau Chief Jackson Prosco joins us now from D.C. Jackson, let's talk about Congress and how it's trying to repair the nation tonight. Well, Robin, they're right back where they left off before this attempted insurrection, holding a debate at this hour over the Electoral College results in the state of Arizona. But this has essentially devolved into simply lawmakers from both sides talking about the violence at the Capitol building today. One thing you won't hear from Republicans, though, is any sort of finger pointing at President Trump or his enablers for fomenting this violence. Democrats, though, are accusing the president of fomenting this violence and essentially that seems to be where things are now headed tonight. Now it does seem that they will in fact finish counting Joe Biden's electoral college win this evening but it also seems many of the Republicans are now lifting their objections, the roadblocks that they had thrown up in this process and it means it could be a much shorter debate than we were originally expecting, Robin. When President Trump finally spoke to his followers it was a video on Twitter. He called for calm but did fan the conspiracy flames. Let's listen. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. Jackson Twitter has now deleted that video and locked Trump's account for 12 hours as a result of this ongoing violence situation. But the damage is done. Will his message set the stage for a similar scene when Biden is inaugurated, which is two weeks from now? The next 14 days are incredibly perilous in this country, Robin, not just here in Washington, D.C., but in cities and states right across the country. We've seen similar pro-Trump protests take place at governor's mansions and state houses across the country. Uh, some state governors have had to move into uh, secure locations for their own safety as a result of this. And it seems as though there could still be further attempts to try and disrupt the inauguration of Biden, especially once reality sets in for Trump and his supporters after Congress finished its work uh, sometime overnight tonight. So there's tremendous concern about those security questions here. It also seems quite likely, though, that President Trump is going to find himself increasingly isolated during his final days in office. And what we're seeing are large numbers of members of Congress either calling for him to be impeached again, calling for the invocation of the 25th Amendment to remove Trump from office, or essentially resigning from the administration. And I would not be surprised if we see a large scale resignation from the administration, a large number of officials uh, in various levels departing uh, out of sheer disgust with what happened tonight. Uh, the first out the door is the spokesperson for the first lady. So, Robin, it's already started. Uh, has security increased since today's developments? Yes. 
the National Guard is here in Washington, D.C., state troopers, U.S. Marshals. They're all over the city. They're securing and fortifying the Capitol building so this work can continue. Of course, Robin, there's going to be lots of questions about why those measures weren't taken in advance, knowing that there was so much tension around today. Uh, but that's a question for another day at this point. Jackson Prosco in Washington, thank you so much for today. Tonight, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted about the situation in Washington, saying Canadians are deeply disturbed and saddened by the attack on democracy in the United States, our closest ally and neighbor. Violence will never succeed in overruling the will of the people. Democracy in the U.S. must be upheld, and it will be.